right? What else? Traffic going to work. Oh, traffic. Oh, I've got to love traffic. I had to run a red light today. My dad saw me. <laughs> That, you know, between my house and, and Brady, you know all the heavy traffic we get. But because of the fog, that, that, that light wasn't functioning, and it was just red, and it was red, and it was red, and it was red, and it was red. And I was just like, I'm going. Because the only thing I could see was that there was nothing at the other side of the bridge. So, uh, all right, Todd, you got something else for us? Oh, I thought you had your hand up before. It's gone. What else? What else do we have to get in order? Finances. Finances. This is, you know, what bill do I pay, right? Which, which one's more important? Oh, we'll just do that. What, what, what are you doing? Uh, which one do I pay today, right? What else is out there? Expectation. Expectation. Ah! What are you? <laughs> I got her. Uh, Todd. Uh, all right, so which medicines should, should I be taking? Do, do I go to, you know, just, oh. do, do you want to start doing this? You, you, you seem, I don't want to leave you out. Uh, but we said family. What else? What, who, who in our families put, you know, kids? All right. What else? In laws. Okay, there we go. Par did I hear parents? Yeah, I heard parents. You know, let me tell you. Oh, wait, no. Uh, <laughs> babies. Oh, and they got a delightful one back there. You know, I haven't heard him at all. How about that? But I told them it's always wonderful to see them and look at them and know somebody else has to take care of them. <laughs> oh, what else? What else? What's that? Husbands. Husbands. <laughs> all right. Uh, there aren't enough left in there for wives, so we're not even going to go there. No. Uh, um, well, all right. Oh, still not. Even the wife didn't do it. I would. Oh, Kennedy, what did you do? All right. I guess we're everyone. Give her a hand. Things, they, they all come at us, right? And, and you start to feel like this balloon. Anyone here ever have one of those weeks where you're feeling like that balloon? You've got so many things coming at you. And you're just like, how do I, how do, I decide what to do first, right? Or, or We've all had weeks like that, right? I had a week like that. Let me tell you about my week. And it wasn't horrible. And I'm not saying woe is me because we all get these weeks, right? And I want to describe my week because some of you know what this is like and just to get you thinking. You know, every week I got stuff, you know, as your pastor I do. You know, I call people. I, I might visit people. Um, you know, we take care of the music with, with Jim and everything. So we, we got that going on. And I, I, I meet with the youth uh, on Thursday nights now. So there's that and preparing for that. And, and then every week, whether you're ready for it or not, Sunday comes. So you got to have the sermon ready. And that's a big chunk of the time. So, you, you know, all that stuff it, that I do in a regular week. And then many weeks we have our discipleship program, which we had this week. So it was um, on Tuesday morning, Wednesday night. So there's that. And then preparing for that and getting ready for that. And then every week I have a meeting that I meet with one of the other pastors in town. So we go and do that. And all that fits into your week nicely. And then other things come along, right? Like uh, this week I had uh, a meeting with the Clarion Association pastors that I had to be at, and that's like half a day. So you get that and throw that in. And then we're, we're doing this wonderful thing tonight, right? So we have to clear out the closet, right? And then we have to pull up the floorboards. Then we have to get this thing ready. We have to, you know, scrub it out. And we have to make sure the water's running right. And then, you know, then we have to come back and get that done. And then make sure the heat's running properly. And, and so that, that takes time. And so that we did this week. And then also, you know, getting the presentation ready tonight for tonight. And, you know, making sure we have the movie. And it's downloaded. And it's there. And it's ready and ready to go. And it's already back there. Um, We've got to get that done. And then uh, Pastor Pete and I from Trinity Reformed Church, we, we decided since they're going to be joining us tonight, wouldn't it be neat if the pastor together led worship so we, we put together we had to get together and practice some worship songs and, and and then all that and we had set the big tent up for the Methodists for their Apple Fest and we had to get that down this week again before it rained so we had to go do that and get that done in there and all, all that stuff taking time 
right? And the after school program's coming up. We are set to be up at the gym the first Thursday in November. And there's so much to do. And so I'm going back and forth with the borough. Can we get the building? Back and forth with the schools. So, you know, can, can you bus us? Do I need to call the bus people? Are, are we set? We're set. Now I just need to do a bunch of paperwork. Because so all this stuff is just there and needing to be done. And, and, and you've had weeks like this, right? At, at your jobs or whatever. And you're just like, ugh. Oh. But you're a real person too, right? So you're like, you got home. And I got kids at home. I expect their uncle to be around a little bit, right? And I, I got a friend I'm trying to help through some difficult things right now. So I've got to go do that. I got to do my share of what's expected around the house to keep it up and running. And you got all this stuff and you start to feel like this balloon guy, right? You're just like, ah, how do you make sure you get it all done right? How do you get all the right things done in time? How do you prioritize that, I guess, is the question. A lot of times we'll say, well, let's just use a calendar, right? Who here keeps a calendar? And some people have them like hanging up in their homes or, or uh, they've got a, a, a planner that they carry around, a pocket planner. Or, or nowadays we, we got our cell phones or, or some other electronic device we keep our calendars on. You know, when I first became pastor... Uh, the guy who was pastor over at Salem Walkchalk Baptist Church, his name was Steve Wilson. And he would come to meetings with his calendar. And you know what he used as his calendar? He would come in to every time we met, and he would have one of those big desk blotter things. You know, like the one I have, you know my desk, like this big. And he'd come in carrying it under his arm. And we'd be sitting there uh, at our meetings, uh, you know, usually over a lunch meeting, and we would start planning, thinking, when's the next association gathering going to be, or when, when are we going to get together again? And he'd be like, well, let's see what's available. And he'd pull this big thing out, and he'd be flipping through all these pages for months in advance. And it's like, why? But, but that was his calendar. Calendar. And, 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 you know, we use calendars to try to make sure the important stuff gets in there, right? But if we're depending on our calendars to prioritize for us, that's a problem, right? Why? Because you know things get on that calendar that aren't priorities. And it's just like, uh, I have to do or, or somebody else wants me to do it again. Just, to, you know, how do we prioritize? So we start sitting back saying, well... What do I want to do? What, what do I want to accomplish this week or by the end of this month? Or what are my goals? What makes me happy? Or, or what am I hoping the outcome is at the end of my time? And we start prioritizing to that. And that's what most of us do. Except for there's a problem with that. Because it's all a lot of I, I. What do I want? What, what, what's in this for me? And we set our priorities for that. We're overlooking for some, something huge. It reminds me of something that happened in 1 Samuel chapter 14. Uh, Saul, the first king of Israel, he's there with some people. And they're trying to decide whether they're going to go down and attack the Philistines, their, their dreaded enemy. The Philistines have done nothing but cause trouble for the Israelites since they settled in the land. And so finally King Saul, king of Israel, says, well, let's just go down and attack them. And all the other guys with them say, sure, king, whatever you say, let's go do it. Except one man, a priest. And he says, first, let's go inquire of the Lord. Before we set this priority and, and, and this set of things in motion, and this is what we say we're going to be about, we want to be about, maybe we should ask God first. You know, in the Christian church nowadays, we say, well, duh, no kidding. That's a no-brainer. Uh, but how, how often do we do that? You know, when we talk about setting priorities, how often are we looking at things and saying, hmm, God, I need to ask you about this first. Because we, we find God says a lot about what our priorities should be. And Jesus said a lot about priorities and how we set them. In fact, Sam, you want, you want to show me something that, that Jesus said here in Mark chapter 8. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? What good is it to get the whole world if you're not thinking about your soul and, and, and its relation to God? And, you know, often we set priorities and we, we line things up in our lives uh, with the idea of, uh, of gaining something out there in the world. What, what good is it if we get it all and we accomplish it all? We get it all fitting in there when our priorities aren't right and we're not even looking our priorities in terms of, hey, what's this do with my soul and with God and my soul? What, what good does it do to accomplish everything you want if you lose the most important thing? And, and this is what Jesus is, is pointing out. So we, we come back to this question, how do we set priorities? How do we set right priorities? How do we set godly priorities in our life? And so we're not looking like this balloon guy, but we're getting all the right things in there 
and, and the things that shouldn't be there just, just go away. You know, Jesus, in two verses, he gives us the answer. Did you know that? In two verses, Jesus says, hey, these are really what your top priority should be. And he starts to give us the start of a plan to make sure all these other things to help us see what, what's priority there. You want to know what they are? Say yes, because I'm going to show you anyway. Yeah. All right, here, here we go. From, from Mark chapter 12. And this is familiar, right? Someone has come to Jesus and he said, Jesus, what is the greatest command? And Jesus says, here's the first command. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Listen, there's no command. There's nothing greater. There's no priority greater than what I'm saying right here. This is what Jesus says. Priority number one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. And, you know, and, and theologians will sit down and they will pull apart these things and say, well, this is what it means to love God with your heart. And this is what it means to love God with your mind and, and your soul and your strength. And they'll explain what all those things. But basically for our understanding today, what's Jesus saying here? Priority number one, love God with everything you got. That's number one. The second one's like it. Love others. Priority number two. Guess what does not make the top two here? You see it? Or you see you don't see it? The self. It's not there. The only time Jesus mentions yourself, he says, it's because other people are ahead of that. Right? Self is not important. It's just so often we take our, our self and we get it ahead of the God, loving God, and loving others. Uh, and so we get into this place where it's like, well, what's most important? The two biggest things that are most important, the biggest priorities that we have to get in our lives, loving God with everything and loving other people. And we say, what does that mean? Because in, in a church, we could say we got this right, but then when we stand back, if I were to ask you, make a detailed list of me, of, of how you spent your week, what you did how you used your resources, what your thoughts and attitudes were. Oh, and now we're, we're getting into some place tricky. What's it going to show? Is it going to show, hey, we're, we're going after the world? Or is it going to show, I'm loving God. I'm loving others with everything I've got. I'm considering my relationship to God with my soul. Because in the church, we, we talk a big game, don't we? But often, other things are revealed when, when we actually look at how we're living. Love God first. Love other people second. What does it mean to love God? Uh, I mean, what does it mean to make that a priority in our lives? I, I mean, I think it means, uh, you know, from the scripture says, set your th mind on things above. Things of heaven. Things that God sets his mind on. The things that are important to God will be important to you if you are loving him with everything you've got. Right? You know, one of the things Jesus said was important. Sandy, show us. The night before he dies, Jesus says this to his disciples. This is my father's glory. What's important to my father? What brings my father glory? How you love God, my father, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Bear much fruit. Bear much fruit. Go bear fruit. If we are loving God with everything we've got, we are bearing fruit. Now, now what does that mean? Well, there are a couple places we can look at it to see what does Jesus mean by bearing fruit. One of the, the obvious places, I think, that many of us in the church will go to is Galatians chapter 5, where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And Sandy, do you want to show us what they are? The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance. I always want to say patience because I learned it as patience before the NIV changed what the word was. Uh, love, peace, uh, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Guess what? Who here has a problem with at least one of those in their lives? Those of you with their hands down are liars. No, no. Uh, but when we're loving God with everything we've got, these things become greater in our lives. Because this is the fruit of it. This is the fruit of loving God with everything we've got. And, and, and so these things, if our priorities are straight, these things should be growing in our lives. And you know what's so great about these things? We get priority number one right. These things happen in our life. And these things help us do priority number two. Love other people. Because there are people out there, you know, forbearance, patience. They take a lot of that, don't they? Or they, they kind of start to make you unkind or you lose self-control. So you get that number one priority right. And you're equipped to live out the second priority. Bearing much fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Here they are. 
But you know, there's another way we can look at this idea of bearing fruit. It's, it's fall time, right? It's harvest time. And we know because, the, like I said, the ladies were here decorating everything. We got this. In another month, they'll be sitting out the cornucopia. We'll be celebrating Thanksgiving, the season of harvest. And, and we'll have a cornucopia of all the stuff we bring in for the harvest. We got these nice banners with the apples there and the, and the box. We're harvesting. We, we know we're bearing fruit and bringing it in, right? That's the harvest. When Jesus talks about bearing fruit, he also looks to this idea of harvest. Sandy, show, show us one of the things he says in, in John chapter 4. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. Jesus says, bear much fruit. Look and see that the harvest is ripe. And what he's talking about here is the harvest for the kingdom of God. And he's saying, look out at the fields. Don't just look at fields. But when you leave this space, look out there. See all those people out there. That's the field. And see, it's ripe for harvest. It's ripe to bring people in to the kingdom of God. See the harvest. Go after the harvest. Bear the fruit of the harvest. Let people know how much I love you. And this is Jesus saying, not me, because, well, you know, but Jesus says, let people know how much I love them. Let them know about my mercy and my grace and about what I've done for them on the cross. See the harvest. Bring in the harvest. Bear the fruit. This is what's important to my Father. And if you are loving my Father with everything, what's important to Him will be important to you. And this is another one where it's like, oh, all right, you do this because it's important to God. You're loving God. And this is a way we love other people. So, so we get these two things. But we still got all these other things in our life, right? That, that push on us and pressure us and make us feel like balloon guy up here. How do we get them straight? How does all that fit? Sandy, bring me back to Mark chapter 12. Love God with everything. Love others. You know, this, this is what Jesus says. This helps you prioritize your life. Everything that comes your way, set next to these top two things. Love God and love others. You know, does, does this allow me to love God more if I do this? Or does it allow me at least to love God at least where I'm loving him now? Or if I do this, this isn't really about loving God at all because it's really just about loving myself. Or, hey, can, can I love other people more if I do it this way? Or at least love them as much as I already am? Or, or again, is this just not about loving other people? This is just me loving myself. Everything we do. Because you know, we talk about you know, employment, our, our jobs, you know, how we earn money. What should I be doing? Where should I be working? How, how much should I work? And, and this, these questions are all answered by this. Your job. Does this allow me to love God? Well, when you look at what God says, if a man or not work, neither will he eat. It's like, okay, that's me obeying God, working. I'm loving God. And when I, I, I'm working, I, I'm earning something so I, I can give to God's church. I can help other people when they need help. That's, so that's me loving God and that's carrying through. I, I can love other people. I can take care of my family, right? And, and so it's all loving. But it comes to a point where like, oh, Am I working too much? So much so that I can't spend time in scriptures with God. I don't have time to pray to God. I'm not spending time with my family the way God wants me to. You see, if that's the answer to that question, then you've gotten your job before that first command. Love God. Love others. And then you need to readjust and get that priority to the right place because those first two things will drive everything else. You know, I've got an option. I can do this Saturday. I really don't want to do it because it's hard work or whatever. Or I do this. I, I really want to, yeah, I want to go have fun, right? But this one's all about me. But this may be about loving other people or serving God in his church or something. Which takes priority then. Which allows me to love God with everything. Which allows me to love other people. But you've got to get those two in there first. See, often what we do is we fill our calendars and we think, well, I've got to get something in there to love God or to show God I love him or, or to love or to take care of other people. And we try to fit that in. But if, if we got our calendars set already, other things just don't fit in there, do they? It's like uh, there's a story, many of you have probably heard it or seen it on, on the Internet, uh, of a professor one day who goes into his students. And he, he says to his students, i got this bucket here. And he's also got uh, a pile of, of stones and he's got a big container of sand and he's got a cup of water like a big cup of water there 
He says, I'm gonna, I, I want to put these all in. So he starts, he puts the sand in the bucket, right? Because it'll go in the bottom, right? Nice foundation there. And he kind of puts the water in there to make it a little bit sloshy. And then he tries to put all the stones in there. But the stones, they, they just fill up the bucket and they kind of overflow to them. So they're falling out and the water's just kind of falling out because it's all overflowing. Like it doesn't seem to fit. But the professor says, no. Then he says, I've got a second set of everything here. And he pulls it out. And he takes that bucket and he puts the big stones in first. And then he pours the sand over top and the sand filters in and all the little cracks, the spaces between the stones, and then he pours the water in and it sucks up into the sand. And it all fits nice and even. Because he's got the big stuff in there first. You know, we need to get our priorities, loving God and loving other people in our lives first. We have to make that decision. It's like, you know, Christmas is coming, right? Who here is excited for Christmas? I went to Crane Axe yesterday, saw the Christmas display, wonderful stuff. Christmas is coming. We'll get all the Christmas stuff out and we'll be so happy to decorate. But guess what? First of January comes and what do you got to do? You got to take it out and put it away. Somehow, it all has to fit back in the closet, right? Or the corner, wherever you keep it. So what do you, you, you take all your Christmas stuff down and you put it away. And if you're like me, you've got some big totes or some big boxes you stick stuff into and you get it there. But you also got the stuff, it's just like its own stuff, right? You get like a smaller box where it's an awkward, smaller shape thing. And so you just kind of, you know, that just goes away by itself. So you take it all and you're going to put it back in the closet or the corner, right? And what do you do? You take all that odd stuff first and you put it right down, down there on the floor, right? And then you stack all those totes right on top, right? No, no, who does that? No, no, because it's not going to work. It's not going to all fit there. What do you do? You put those big totes in first and everything else you fit on top or around it, right? And it fits. That's how it works. <laughs> and don't open it till next November, right? Or next December. Uh, but yeah. You, you gotta, that's how it You've got to get the big stuff in there first. Our priorities. Getting our priorities straight. We have to decide first. Are going to love God with everything? And I'm going to love other people. And then everything else that comes our way, if it's supposed to be in there, it's going to fit around those two things. I had a roommate in college my senior year. He, he, we only had him for the first semester because he was a returning senior. And so he only needed to go that, that one last semester. But he got really serious over the summer before he came back to college. He got really serious about time management. He had been to officer training school in the military. Steve, you might know, you know uh, something about what that might be or something. But, uh, and so he got really serious about how he was going to spend his time. So every Sunday, I kid you not, for two hours, every Sunday afternoon evening, he would pour over his calendar at his desk and he would block out all his time for a week. Everything he would do, it was on that calendar. Every moment was accounted for. This is when I eat, this is when I sleep, this is when I'm going to study, this is when I'm in class. He, he did cross country, so this is when I'm training, this is when I'm at a meet, you know, whatever, this is when I'm just hanging out with friends. It was all there, planned, nice and neat, marked off on his calendar. And you know what used to crack us up? We'd look at his calendar. And you know what was on the calendar for Sunday afternoon? He actually scheduled time in his calendar for two hours for scheduling his calendar. <laughs> It used to crack us up, but I thought about that this week. I was like, maybe we can all learn something from that. Maybe if we make an intentional time each week that's on our calendar, where we look back at our week and we say, hmm, what were my opportunities this week? Did I get my priorities right? If I look back at what I did, what I said, what my thoughts, attitudes were, how I spent my money, was that me loving God more? Was it me loving other people? Or was I chasing after the world? And we do that, and then we say, all right, here's my week. Here's what's coming up this week. How can I love God with everything? How can I love others? We do that, and everything else that needs to get accomplished that week is going to fit in there in that empty space. Love the Lord your God with everything. And have others more than yourself. Priority one and two. Let's pray.